Today we'll be kicking it off with Marvel's hottest movie out, Spider-Man. We'll be going over a few topics regarding the cast, so sit back and enjoy. First up, we'll be discussing why Tom and Zendaya don't want to appear intimate in bed on the big screen. Next, we'll touch on the new movie Spider-Man No Way Home, then we'll get into how this Spider-Man movie sets up for a coming Marvel sequel. Lastly, we'll finish off wondering if this movie is a bad move for the MCU. Tom and Zendaya reveal why they don't want an intimate, explicit scene in the movie series. As many of you know, Tom and Zendaya aren't just on-set lovers, but the two recently came forward and let their real-life romance known. Fans had been speculating that they had been together around the time the first Spider-Man came out around 2018. They'd been spotted going on vacations together and spending a large amount of their free time together. Die-hard fans of the movie and those in awe of the couple wondered if they would take their relationship to the next level on screen. Even though the pair has more than likely taken their relationship to that level in real life, they quickly said they hated the idea of a sex scene. Holland stated, I don't think it's appropriate for the Spider-Man franchise as we're still very much young kids. Should there be a future for this character, maybe one day we will explore that. But at the moment, this is a film about celebrating friendships and young love. Zendaya agreed with her boyfriend in the interview saying, Peter Parker is like a little brother. She said this is how most viewers see him as. Holland had added, no one wants to see Peter Parker having sex. That would be horrible. So could we see a more intimate scene with an older Peter in the future? Maybe Tom will almost become like his father figure, Tony Stark, and we'll see him in a relationship like Tony had with Piper. Either way, we'll just have to wait for a future Spidey movie to find out. After all, we're talking about two high schoolers who just graduated. Maybe they were right to not include a scene to that degree, especially because fans feel it expresses their innocent side. It's nice to see the two progress from teammates to friends and then lovers. For now, we'll just have to wait on the answer. Now, let's talk more about the hit movie Spider-Man No Way Home. So the amount of old villains we see in the new movie is incredible. It's nice to see all these old faces emerging, different enemies from each Spider-Man universe. The first and most notorious villain to Tobey Maguire's universe is the Green Goblin, played by none other than William Defoe as Norman Osborn. Now, in Toby's world, Norman died, but due to the spell cast by Doctor Strange, he, along with other villains, started to resurface. In addition, Otto Octavius, aka Doctor Octopus, also came back, not to mention the Sandman, played by Thomas Church. Also, Andrew Garfield's enemy, such as Max Dillon, who is portrayed by Jamie Foxx, returns as his high-voltage self, a concept that passed as villains and some who had died, all meet in one universe is crazy. Yes, and then let's not forget the biggest, best part of the film, the fact all three Spider-Mans are in the same universe. That's right, Toby, Andrew, and Holland all together on one screen. And oh man, it was more than fans could handle. Their dynamic on screen was funny and brotherly, it came together perfectly. Back to the villains though. Now Doctor Strange had every intention in sending all the villains back, but Tom took pity on them especially Dr. Osborne. So what did Tom do? He took it upon himself to come up with an antidote for each villain so they could return to normal and eventually return to their universe. In the movie, each villain got the chance to redeem themselves. Fun fact too, the scene where all the villains meet was supposed to be a mere ending scene or crediting scene, but a last minute change led to the whole movie surrounding them. You can thank the Marvel Studios president for that one. It was also a funny dynamic when all the villains were together in one room. Fans were relieved to see Dr. Osborne finally rid of his darker side self, the Green Goblin. We know it had taken over many times before it was a big relief to him. We saw every villain cured, in fact, even though some turned violent and didn't wish to return to their plain human self with no power. Overall, it was a bittersweet ending seeing every era of villains and Spider-Mans all together. Now let's get into the fact that Spider-Man set up this Marvel movie. It's rumored that that this Spider-Man is setting up the new Black Panther movie. Now, it's said this Spider-Man movie is wrapping up Tom Holland's role as Peter, so now the slate is wiped clean and we could aim to see a Spider-Man 4. However, this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so you can't help but wonder what movies that happen now will affect the future. I know you're asking yourself, well, how does Black Panther tie into Spider-Man? Well, we start in Spider-Man No Way Home. Peter's friends get into their dream school MIT. Seems to be an Easter egg because Tony Stark attended and graduated from there. Not to mention that a little bit of Black 
Panther Wakanda Forever took place at MIT for a brief while in August this past year. And around the same time, Dominique Thorne makes her debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Riri Williams, and she plays Ironheart. It was said she was filming at MIT around August 19th not certain that this is a connection, but in the comics, Riri gets accepted into MIT at the mere age of 15. She then goes on to build a replica of Tony Stark's suit with her own twist. Tony had taken notice of her and made the decision to endorse her, and she then became Ironheart. It said she gets her own show, but her story ties more into Black Panther Wakanda forever, and we come to find out her origin story. So is it possible Peter's friends meet Riri, or do members of Wakanda seek her out, and just what is her background? Keep in mind too the fact Tony took notice of her, so this took place before he passed away. Either way, we look forward to her own show to find out more of how she came to be and her role in Black Panther. Also, is there more significance to MIT? Wouldn't it be cool if Ned and MJ were somehow involved in this? But I guess we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves given the fact we don't know what direction this could take or if the two worlds even collide. We'll be in the lookout for more Easter eggs and upcoming news. Is it possible that this new Spider-Man movie plot ruins the MCU? The whole ordeal with this spell that was trying to be contained starts off funny, but you soon realize the repercussions. It's thought that Marvel should fix the problem sometime in the future, so why is it thought that this spell ruins the future of the MCU? Well, the tricky thing about this spell is that it brought up people from different universes at random. It's also wondered why Peter didn't ask Doctor Arc Strange for for a different spell. Like, for example, what if he had asked for a different outcome and that would make everyone forget Peter Parker, just without the negative effects? Also, the fact that Venom and Eddie Brock haven't yet met their universe's Spider-Man. In the recent Venom, Let There Be Carnage, it was noted that Venom and a part of Eddie have memories across the multiverse. It's possible Venom could have already met a Peter Parker before. It's not sure which one or if it's any of the Spideys we know. The final spell that Doctor releases makes everyone forget who the recent Peter Parker is. But that seems to only be one Earth, so is it possible people on other worlds know who he is still? In the ending scene of No Way Home, it pans to Tom Hardy as Eddie, and he's talking with Venom at some bar in Mexico. He's conversing with Venom before he vanishes, and a part of, if not all, of Venom was left behind. We haven't seen Spider-Man meet Venom since Toby's reign as Spider-Man. We direly need the Spider-Man and Venom relationship rekindled. So that's the big question. Does Venom find its way to a Spider-Man we know of, or who does it make its way to? Well, Spider-Fans, there you have it. We touched on the new Spider-Man movie and touched on the crossover possibilities. We discussed what the future could hold for Riri as Ironheart and what we'll come to find out about her. And could we see Peter Parker's friends at MIT? Also, will we get another Venom and Spider-Man movie? We'll have to wait on it to find out if the future of Peter, Reary, and Venom. Let us know your thoughts on what could happen next and your take on the new movie.